If you have ever said meow over the radio frequency, go ahead and hit that like and subscribe button, right meow. Aviators, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Ty Jones, your air nerd, bringing you honest experiences, reviews, and training tips that'll help you aviate, navigate, and communicate. This is not gonna be a preview video like I've submitted previously. This is gonna be a full video because I really want everybody to take advantage of the of this simple idea that I have that helps every single veteran pilot that I've talked to and once they've applied this what I'm about to share their landings have improved dramatically so I wanted to share this and hopefully improve America's landings or maybe not okay maybe I'm going a little bit too far but improve the landings of whoever's watching this pretty much so and it's a very simple idea uh, which uh, which i'm about to share with you before we get into the landings i just wanted to let everybody know i am not the best instructor um i don't know everything i don't pretend to know everything and in fact one of my videos i actually explained the G how the gps works um in, in the wrong way so i'm going to own up to it it's a perfect example how i i don't have the greatest uh, uh, teaching skills or I'm not the best instructor in the world but I try my best for each and every one of you and with that being said I hope to encourage others that may be too shy to do their other to, to post a YouTube video and teach um, a better way of teaching than me or their flight instructor or your flight instructor or, who, or whoever because they may not feel too perfect to expose themselves on YouTube so hopefully these videos um, will encourage you to make your own YouTube channel um, to because it, aviation is so amazing. Everybody should fly. Um, it, it, as long as I have air in my lungs, I'm going to try to push people to fly because it is that amazing. Um, I, I wish I can. I wish I can make every single person in this world a pilot because um, it's it's. It's, it's that awesome. And if you don't have the funds or the financial to pay for the whole flight training, that's what these videos are trying. That's what I'm trying to do with these videos. So you can educate yourself ahead of time because all of this information I'm giving you, you normally would have to pay an instructor for. So if you're going to learn anything from my channel, hopefully it will it will deduct from that financial burden from you so you can actually take that money and take it and use it for more flying instead of more ground time because ground is very expensive too. And that's another reason why I have my online ground school on my website for dirt cheap. I actually recently just took $100 off of it. Um, I just want to help. That's, that's literally what this whole channel is all about. I don't care about profits. I care about putting great pilots in the air. Um, so with that being said, the whole reason why I'm, I said all of that is I'm, I think I'm actually going to try to, I'm, I'm going to start putting my bloopers <laughs> at the end of these videos. <laughs> Hopefully, so I don't know, maybe that'll encourage people to watch the whole, the whole entire video. I don't know if you remember like the old Jackie Chan movies. I think every single Jackie Chan movie at the very end, they had the bloopers or just like the Marvel movies. Where after the end of the credits, you sit there and watch the credits. Like, well, what, why are you watching the credits? Dude, you gotta, you, there, there's going to be something at the end of the credits. Well, kind of the same thing with these videos. Um, and again, the reason why I'm doing this is to encourage people that I am not perfect. I make mistakes. So take a stab at it. You never know where your YouTube channel might go. And you'll never know how many people that you could help. With all that being said, sorry, I, I didn't mean to make that all long and dragged out. But anyway, let's go ahead and get right to the video. All right, so landings. So to your so rule number one in landing, your primary objective on landing is a goal around every single time. If your primary objective your primary goal is to land when you're on landing you're going to end up finding yourself trying to force your airplane to the ground how many times have you seen an airplane come in coming in if you're landing you're coming in and you see this called porpoising if you see that <laughs> i know i've done it i know too many times that i want to uh, to want to admit 
Um, but the reason why that happens is because the pilot, their, their primary focus is to put the airplane on the ground, no matter what. So that's what causes these these mishaps on the ground because their primary focus is to land, is to land, is to land, is to land. Even though we're all taught to do a go around, we're not taught to do a go around first. So when you're coming into land, next time you're coming into land, always treat it as a go around. Mentally process, even though everything is great, you're lined up on the piano keys, you're, or, or the fence, whatever you want to call it, the threshold, I'm talking about the threshold, I don't know, they look like piano keys, I don't, I don't know. Anyway, you're coming in down, you're right over the numbers, you're, you're, going, you're coming in perfectly, and then you bounce just a little too hard, you're already in a mental state to go full, full throttle and then do a go around. However, and then you can save the aircraft. However, if you're in a mental state to land that aircraft, and you're coming in all nice and good and everything like that, and then finally you, at the, out of nowhere, you get a little bit of a crosswind or a little gust or maybe a little tailwind. The airplane just drops or something like that. You're gonna want to still focus on your primary objective by putting the airplane on the ground. That's where mishaps happen. So, uh, my advice to everybody, even if you're a student pilot, private pilot, instrument pilot, commercial pilot, flight instructor, it doesn't even matter. Make sure your primary focus when you're on that short final is to do a go around. Already get prepared to have that hand and that throttle to do to go to 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 do a go around. Think of it as this. There's types of pilots that already do this. Think of a Navy pilot or a Marine pilot that's landing on an aircraft carrier. What do they do as soon as their mains touch the deck? They go full throttle. Why? They are prepared to do a go around every single time those, those wheels touch full throttle. Because if they don't, if, they're, if they think that they want to land, of course they would hit the brakes and they would go throttle to idle and then they would try to land. But if they miss those cables, guess what their airplane is going? They're going right into the water. So their primary objective, their main focus is a go around every single time. No matter how perfect their approach looks or may seem to them, every single time their wheels touch on that aircraft carrier, they're going full throttle just in case something happens. So think of that mentality next time you're landing in your Cessna, always prepare yourself for a go around first, unless you catch those cables. Unless everything is perfect, you got that, you got that nice good flare, everything's nice and smooth, and then you can ex execute that, that nice smooth landing. So that should alleviate the whole porpoising and, and all that good stuff, okay? Um, now I'm going to show you um, the second common mistakes that I see in landings um, about seat height. Your seat height can do wonders on landings. I'll show you a short clip of one of my Instagram videos um, that kind of explains that. Let's go ahead and check that out. When we do come to land, we want to touch our main fat wheels first. So in order to do that, we have to kind of rotate the aircraft like this. Not enough to where you're going to tail strike, but just enough like that. However, if you are sitting in the seat and you're kind of low, once you're in here, you're not going to be able to see the runway. So what you're going to naturally tend to do is you're going to take the yoke and you're going to push it forward in order for you to see it. And when you do that, that is how you have these flat, hard landings. However, if you put your seat up a little bit where you can actually see the engine kind of look how much more runway and more uh more scenery i can see so when the when the nose does come up a little bit you can still see exactly where you're landing and that should solve your landings you guys have you should see you should have some nice smooth landings if you just move your seat up so yes seat height does do wonders i mean just just think about it i mean if you're you're coming in Here's, I'm, I'm sitting in the seat right now, right? Actually, let me, let me sit this way. All right, can you guys see me? Oh, shoot. My microphone is about to get caught. I think, can you guys still hear me? All right, cool. Uh, I'm not even going to edit this. I'm just going to keep on going. <laughs> all right. So anyway, all right, so you're sitting in your plane. You're flying, you're flying, you're flying. Now you're flaring, you're flaring, you're flaring. Now why are you flaring? We'll get into that in a minute. But anyway, as you're going up, here's my, here's my engine. Here's my engine cowling. 
as I'm going up, as I'm going up, as I'm going up. And look, <clears throat> now I can't see anything above the engine cowling. So what do you tend to do? You want to push the nose back down, right? You don't want to do that because as soon as you push the nose down, you're already close to the ground. And guess what's going to happen? Bam! You're going to have a flat landing. So if you move your seat upwards, now the engine cowling is down here. So now as you're flaring and flaring and flaring, look, I can still see over. I can still see the runway. I can still see everything. So move your seat up and that will help you with the flat landings. Um, now, the reason why we flare or um, transition or whatever you want to call it. I mean, there's so many different names and terminologies nowadays. I, I can't even keep up with them anymore. The transition, the flare, whatever you want to call it. So when you're when you're low to the ground, this is <laughs> this is my runway. When you're low low to the ground, you're going to transition up like this. But when do you transition? When is it that? Well, that's another common mistake that student pilots, young pilots, don't even know when to do it. They they'll start flying when they're 10 feet, 20 feet in the air, or they'll get down on the ground and they won't even because they don't know when to do it. So think of it like this <clears throat> the flare is the same exact thing as going into slow flight so what do you do in slow flight you're at the altitude and you pull the throttle back you put your flaps down and then you're and then you're trying to maintain altitude how do you maintain altitude so again we're doing we're going this thing again right all right so if you if you're going slow going slow going slow and then what's going to happen to the plane the plane's going to start losing altitude so what do you do to keep your altitude you pull the yoke back and what does the plane do? The plane actually starts doing this. It starts doing this. It starts doing this. And then finally, you're at your airspeed that you want to that you want to maintain, and then you reintroduce the throttle, and then you just keep it there for slow flight. You got your flaps and everything like that. But look what the airplane is at right now. This is what you're doing when you're landing. So when you're <clears throat> when you're aiming for those numbers. When you're right over those numbers, you are transitioning into slow flight, maintaining that altitude, but you're trying to maintain altitude about one or two feet off the ground. Once you're about one or two feet off the ground, that's when you'd start your transition, and that's where that's how the nose goes up and up and up and up and up because you're trying to maintain that altitude. And then naturally, the mains will touch the ground first and once you do touch the mains oh cool now you can just rest the airplane down um, so think of it as that way if you apply these concepts you're going to have the smoothest landings every single time and if you want your landings even smoother never land at idle always land with just a little bit of power in there and you're going to have those nice landings where the where the the mains will start will 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 touch the ground so soft that they'll start to spin under i mean you can feel the mains start to spin but the weight of the aircraft isn't all the way on the mains yet that is now that's a smooth landing that is what you're literally shooting for another thing too when you are too when you are about a foot or two feet off the ground and you are putting that nose up, putting that nose up, trying to maintain altitude, stop the nose when the engine cowling is right at the end of the runway or right at the tree line, whatever is at the end of the runway. That's where you want to maintain that nose. Right when that engine cowling is right there, if everything is great, then the wheels will start to touch. I'll show you a video of exactly what I mean. Let's go ahead and check that out right now. Okay, so as you're coming into land, this is what we call short final. Now, I want you to concentrate on two things and two things only, and that is airspeed and the numbers, or the piano keys, or whatever aiming point that you're gonna be aiming for. Put that nose right down at whatever you're aiming for. Let's say the numbers. So airspeed, numbers airspeed numbers as soon as you can't see those numbers anymore that's when you're going to start pulling back the power nice and smooth okay now this is where we're going to start the transition where we're going to be maintaining altitude just like i was mentioning in that slow flight keep pulling back the yoke until the engine calendar is at the end of the runway keep pulling keep pulling keep pulling keep pulling and wait and just wait just let her land for herself and then there it is always keeping the center line and there it is let's see that one more time 
coming in again airspeed numbers airspeed numbers of course our primary goal is a go around mentally preparing ourselves maintaining the center line airspeed numbers airspeed numbers keep looking at those until you can't see anymore okay I can no longer see the numbers now I'm gonna pull the power all the way back to idle but put a little bit of power in so I can maintain that nice smooth uh, landing and now I'm gonna transition to that slow flight maintain altitude maintain altitude keep that nose pulling up until it's at the end of the runway and there it is smooth landing every time now some of you may be asking okay well that's great Ty but what about night landings light landings are a lot more difficult than day landings that is true um, because in the daytime you have your peripheral vision to 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 use as as your aid you may not even be you may you may not even realize it until you fly at night uh, especially if you have a flight instructor like me who randomly turns off the landing light while you're landing at nighttime um, that's a great experience too and, and you can actually the reason why I do that is because uh, there's no requirement to land uh, with a landing light at nighttime according to the according to the far aim if you don't believe me look it up it is required if you're doing for commercial yes uh, or, or with landing with passengers of course but um, other than that there's no requirement um, so that's why I turn off the landing light at, at nighttime for my students for you know at least for my students at least but anyway uh, landing at nighttime my recommendation is practice um, use the same exact concept um, number one go around prepare yourself for a go around every single time if you feel that the airplane should be on the ground but it's not do a go around there's nothing wrong with doing a go around you can do a go around 10 times it's better than doing a rough landing or, or, or destroying the airplane or, or you know or god for, forbid you're going to end up in the side of a hangar or something like that because you try to force the airplane to the ground or do a prop strike because you put the nose into the ground and now you have a $25,000 um, issue on your hand because just because you did a prop strike so my recommendation number one go around prepare yourself for a go around every single time number two if everything's perfect then you go for the landing at night focus just on the 10 and 2 o'clock um, if you look right in front of you it's going to screw you up because you it, it's you're not used to it so look on the side and it will help you because you can see when the ground is coming up um, especially under 10 o'clock if you're sitting in the left seat obviously you can see a little bit better um, look at that and then when you do touch have your flight instructor do a couple of landings first um, if, if, if they'll allow you to do it um, or if, if, if they'll do it for you. Once the wheels touch, look and get a visual memory of where the airplane is. Get that scenery of what the ground looks like for whatever aircraft you're flying. That way you'll have a visual uh, a memory of what it should look like when you're that close to the ground. Um, so that's what I would recommend. If you have learned anything from this video today, landings, number one, go around. Two, move your seat up a little bit so you can see the runway in front of you as you transition and get that engine cowling up to the end of the runway or get the end and, and put your engine cowling at the trees or whatever it, it, at the end of the runway. And then just sit there and just wait for the wheels to touch and spin and then you put the weight of the aircraft on there and then you pull the rest of the power out it's gonna be it's gonna be amazing um, folks if this video helped at all please comment below uh, visit my website www.airnerdaviation.com I have a whole ground course on there and check it out um, if you have any um, suggestions questions comments or concerns please put those in the comments below um, I hope this helps. As always, I always want you guys to keep flying, keep learning, and always have fun. And here's the bloopers. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. It doesn't matter if you're a private pilot, instrument pilot, commercial pilot. It doesn't even matter. Jedi pilot. Every single pilot can learn from landing tits. From...
I did not just say that. It doesn't matter if you're a private pilot, instrument pilot, commercial pilot, it, everybody can learn from landing tips, 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 landing tips. So this channel is mainly just to help. So for all the naysayers that comment and you know just put derogatory stuff on the comment section, not just on my channel, but for anybody's channel, it doesn't help anybody. Um, it just, it, it, people read it and they don't get anything out of it. So why would you even say something? Uh, I don't like that. Okay, so there's two things in landing. Number one, landing first. No, oh geez. Um, focus. Number one is, I can't think of the simplest thing. I don't even know how I am a flight instructor right now. Cause, <laughs> um, go rounds. Thank you. Go rounds first, landing second. Okay, cool. Okay. Take two. First thing is landing. It, oh, I did it again. What time is it? It is 3.23 a.m. I think it's time for me to go to bed and try again tomorrow. Yeah.